Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About It. On today's episode, I wanted to go over the subject of evil experiments that humans have performed on other humans. The first example on my list is Project MK Ultra. In the early stages of the Cold War, the CIA had turned its attention to developing mind control techniques or drugs that they could use against their enemies after becoming fearful that these Soviets were already advancing in this area. And the man put in charge of this was a chemist called Sidney Gottlieb, who ran MKUltra from the 1950s until the 1960s. And under his leadership, countless people who were unaware or unwilling in some cases to participate in these trials, in these experiments, were subjected to things such as electroshock therapy, sleep and sensory deprivation, hypnosis, sexual assault, and most commonly of all, they were exposed to vast amounts of hallucinogenic drugs such as LSD. Now, whilst the CIA believed that this work was very important in winning the Cold War and winning future wars, they knew that if the American public became aware of MKUltra, that there would be uproar and it would make continuing the project very difficult. So to avoid this, those working for MKUltra would experiment on prisoners from America, Japan, the Philippines and Germany, and they would also contract work out to universities and research facilities, none of which knew they were working for the CIA or what these experiments were really being used for. And whilst contracting this workout meant the CIA could distance themselves from MKUltra if they needed to, at times agents needed to do the work themselves. And one example of this is something called Operation Midnight Climax. So what Midnight Climax involved was prostitutes luring men to CIA-run safe houses where, unbeknownst to them, these men would be given large amounts of LSD. And from behind two-way mirrors or via recording equipment, agents would monitor and record the results. They wanted to see how easy it would be to control someone's mind via this drug. But whilst the project was unethical, it was also morally corrupt because these agents treated the whole thing like a party. Allegedly, during Operation Midnight Climax, which I must say, for a covert operation that involves sex workers, is a pretty on-the-nose name, these agents would partake in the illegal activities all around them. And they had little to no regard for the men that had been drugged, showing that the race for mind control far outweighed any moral compass they could have been following. After many years of research, Sidney Gottlieb concluded that mind control was not possible. They'd done all the experimentation they could, but he just couldn't find a way to convincingly control another human being's mind. By the late 1960s, Project MK Ultra had come to a complete stop, with not very much to show for its efforts. That is, except the legacy of LSD that it left behind. Because, in his efforts to control people, Sidney Gottlieb had introduced the American public to LSD and they had very quickly taken it up as a recreational drug, which, putting moral and legal issues to one side, is ironic seeing as the hallucinogenic mind-opening drug has the exact opposite effect on people. And it was in 1973 that the then head of the CIA, Richard Helms, ordered all evidence of Project MKUltra to be destroyed, which was a largely successful operation. However, some evidence still remains. The next example of unethical human experiments that I'd like to talk to you about are several experiments performed by Unit 731. So, Unit 731 was the name of the Biological and Chemical Warfare Research Area of the Imperial Japanese Army. And it was during the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II that they performed the vast majority of their lethal experiments which includes things such as vivisections being performed on live and conscious patients that had been infected with various diseases, the aim of which was for the Unit 731 scientists to see how these diseases had infected their internal organs. Prisoners' limbs would be amputated or crushed, frozen, set on fire, 
in order to research these injuries and their recovery rates. Um, disturbingly, women would be forcibly impregnated, they would be then infected with diseases, and at a certain stage, the fetus would be cut from the mother in order to research how these diseases had affected the unborn child. And in an attempt to create a lethal strain of viruses such as the bubonic plague or typhus, they would infect a group of prisoners, find the sickest, kill the rest, drain the sickest of their blood, use this disease-filled blood to infect another group of people, find the sickest, kill the rest, drain the sickest person's blood. And they would repeat this process until they had the desired strain, at which point they would expose the infected prisoners to a vast amount of fleas. The fleas would then bite the infected prisoners, drinking their infected blood. The fleas were then collected in dust and the dust was sealed in clay pots. And then on October 4th, 1940, a Japanese fleet flew over the Chinese village of Guizhou. And from above, they dropped these flea-filled clay bombs. As they hit the ground, sending a red dust all over this village, the villagers were covered in these fleas. The fleas would bite them, infecting them with the lethal strain that Unit 731 had created. And then, over a period of time, thousands of people would die as a direct result of this attack. And it was in 1945 that the Japanese Imperial Army were finally defeated by the Soviets. And the final example of unethical human experiments that I have for you comes from a prison doctor who performed gruesome testicular transplants. From 1913 until 1951, Chief Surgeon Leo Stanley performed countless vasectomies on prisoners at San Quentin State Prison. As an expert in this field, it didn't take much for Leo Stanley to convince prisoners that having this procedure would improve their health, give them more vigor, and just make their lives better. But in reality, Leo Stanley's reason for performing these vasectomies was not to help these people, it was to stop them from reproducing. Because Leo Stanley was a Christian fanatic, he was a racist and he was a homophobe, and he believed that it was his God-given right to stop these men from reproducing. Because what he believed to be immoral acts happening all around him, in his view, made these men lesser than him and therefore gave him license to do whatever he wanted to them. As time went on, he began to study endocrinology, which is the study of how different glands affect hormones, which led him to believe that if you were to remove the testicles of a young prisoner after their death and then transplant them into another man, that man, all of whom were wealthy older clients of Leo Stanley, it, it would decrease the aging process, increase his men's hormones and improve their masculinity tenfold. But of course, Chief Surgeon Leo Stanley didn't stop there. He had started to take the testicles of animals such as sheep or goats or bulls which he would then grind into a paste that he would inject into his client's scrotum, telling them that this method would allow his clients to absorb the animal's testosterone into their body, once again improving and increasing their masculinity. And despite the unnecessary and unethical and immoral things that Leo Stanley had done to an estimated 10,000 patients, he suffered no consequences for his actions when he retired in 1951. So guys, that brings me to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. And of course, leave me a comment below. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.